Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Christian. I'm a member of the Moosad project team and would like to uh, present our project today. Um, as you can already see in the title, uh, Moosad is a hackerspace arts project. Um, yeah. What does that mean? Um, actually, it started off as an arts project only. Um, I work for Muati, which is a small uh, ISP, and um, Oh, sorry, uh, to start with that. That's the plan, what we would like to do. We would like to shoot this thing to space, like 300 kilometers above the Earth. Uh, it's the original size, so it's really, really uh, that small. Um, yeah, what um, is, is Muerte back? Muerte is um, a small ISP for uh, arts and um, uh, cultural organizations in Graz, in Austria. Um, and we are also making a lot of projects uh, involving arts and, and technology. So we thought a satellite would be very nice to have. Um, we started it uh, like two years ago. The, the first thing was that uh, Jogi Hofmüller, one of our uh, um, one of my coworkers, read the news that there is a, a company in the U.S. It's called Into Orbital Systems. Um, they offer a very they have a very special offer. They offer you a kit, a satellite kit, uh, including the launch to a LEO orbit uh, for $8,000, which is uh, very cheap. Uh, normally, this costs like forty dollars to $100,000, depending where you buy it. Um, and we thought, OK, that's definitely doable to make a, an arts project for it. So um, we started to get funding for it, and um, we wanted to particip uh, participate in this uh, space thing, something um, we thought it could be space 2.0 after the 60s, where all this space, yeah, magic, and now it's space 2.0, uh, kind of. Um, and we want to, wanted to be part of it. Uh, so we got public funding and bought the kit. Uh, and when we got it, we thought, OK, uh, that's a lot more work we uh, anticipated. And so we started to get new members in our team and read lots of stuff. Um, yeah, the first ideas before, even before we had the kit, we thought of things we could do with the satellite. Um, for one of the first ideas was we uh, wanted to build a radio scanner. Um, radio, by this radio we mean uh, uh, FM broadcasting, uh, like radio stations. Um, we wanted to listen to the radio stations from space, wanted to know which radio stations uh, we could uh, receive in space and even, uh, if possible, receive multiple stations at, the, at, at one time because they share the frequencies, but not, uh, they are not near on, 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 the, on the floor, but, of course, from space they may be nearby. Um, and wanted to listen to this radio and see what is, is, is leaving the Earth. Uh, then we wanted to make a ham radio, re re uh, radio relay, of course. Uh, we wanted to send messages to the Earth back, so ship up some messages there and send it back. Uh, we also wanted to um, send messages to space, something like you shout into a microphone on Earth, and uh, then there is a an, an loudspeaker in space. Of course, there's no air, but uh, we found it funny to uh, yeah, send something to space, a message. Um, one early, uh, early idea was uh, laser graffiti, so mount some laser diodes on the satellite and uh, blink back to, to the Earth. Um, but there's already somebody in, in Korea, I think, uh, who does it. Um, we wanted to have uh, like an idea what, uh, how the, the satellite feels in space, how, to, how it, it flies through space, if you will. Uh, and therefore, we wanted to know how it, uh, the thumbling goes on because the satellite has no, it's not stable. It will be released by rocket and after it's, afterwards it will thumble over all axis. And we wanted to know um, what is the speed of this thumbling and how does this uh, feel. We actually thought about a machine mounting some guys in, uh, in, in um, a revolving thing where you can Stumble with the, uh, the same speed as the satellite does in space. Uh, and also, we thought of a very good idea. It's called poor man space travel. Um, of course, the team members will take, place, uh, uh, take part of it. And also, you can buy poor man space travel. You can give us a hair for uh, $250. We will bring it to space. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, be part of it, just get to us. 
Okay, um, so as I mentioned earlier, we um, bought this kit and it came like in a normal post box. It took some time because of, uh, the, the custom took some time to get it to, to, to the custom. Um, but we finally got it and then we uh, looked at it and uh, yeah, we thought, okay, that's less that we anticipated. Uh, we thought that would be more in it. Uh, what you can see here is um, uh, the solar panels and microprocessor unit, it's actually an evaluation board, uh, which we don't use because it's crap, uh, and battery, some metal, uh, the ejection cylinder, a sample ejection cylinder. This is uh, actually a part of the rocket where the satellite, the actual satellite will be uh, put in on the rocket and pushed out in space. Uh, and some software, and the software is uh, basically the GABA files and PCB schematics for, for uh, the PCB boards and the electronics. Uh, as I already mentioned, batteries and solar cells. And there is also, not on the picture because we got it in another way, uh, some micro hard modems on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, that was uh, the first plan how to communicate with the satellite, but um, soon we found out it's not a very good idea to use them. Um, because um, there is a lot of trouble with, um, um, with um, uh, licenses and stuff. So, so we thought, okay, it would be much better to make it an uh, uh, amateur radio satellite. It's not cool. uh, yeah, <clears throat> as you can see, you need much more than the kit uh, got here. So we, after some time, we bought a lot of, of things. We uh, made some VCBs and, and bought some... some uh, some components and started to build it. And yeah, after some time we found out, okay, mm, probably that's not the best thing they got us. So we started quite from scratch. Um, yeah, I wanna tell you now a little bit about the current plan we are working on, um, the current uh, payload projects we are working on, because these early ideas, some of them turned out to, not, uh, to, to be not possible to realize. Um, we want to mount a piezo uh, microphone on it. Of course, there is no um, real sound out there because there is no air. But uh, we hope that at least some molecules will hit the piezo and we can detect that. Uh, um, we also want to uh, take audio samples, like some seconds of audio, uh, <coughs> and hopefully we will hear some, some thermal expansion contraction within the, the uh, the satellite and also in the microphone. <coughs> and some sound artists already told us, yeah, that would be very cool and, and, and make some sound with it. Um, then there is uh, Jupiter Larson. It's an artist from, from the US. Um, he works with uh, various counters uh, since some years. And he told us, okay, it would be very cool if the satellite, the satellite itself is, for, for us, the satellite is the performer. Uh, and the satellite, uh, the artist, if you will, uh, will count for us. And we thought of some things we could count. And one of the first things we can sort of is, okay, let's mount a button on the outside and make a label. If you're an alien, please press here. Um, and yeah, hopefully this goes up, but most probably don't. Um, what we're really counting is the number of beacons we will send out. The satellite sends an, an, an beacon at a, a fixed rate, and we are counting that. And we also want to count like the, the uh, rotations of the satellite using photodiodes mounted on the, on the satellite. Um, of course, you have to have, ta you have, to have uh, take pictures. Um, we will mount a camera on there. Uh, try to make pictures from space, from the moon, from whatever. Um, then there is another artist who would, would like to send kids wishes to space. Um, it, the, the idea behind is it that kids can, or somebody can wish, uh, ha has a wish if you can see a shooting star. Uh, and the idea is to put wishes into a satellite and when it burns up, after the, the mission period, it will be a shooting star on its own. So that's the, the idea behind it. Also, there is a group called Alien Productions. Their name is, uh, they had the name before the project already. And they did it for the European <coughs> Broadcasting Network, did uh, an arts project where they compressed the complete Orient, uh, European culture into one small two kilobyte uh, file. 
uh, and send that out to space. Um, and we also want to broadcast it um, if the energy budget allows it. Yeah, and of course, all the data we, um, we receive and, and, and gather during the mission is freely and open available. Okay, next will Bernhard. Okay. Well, nice picture. It's a typical meeting of a communications group. Was normally, uh, you've already heard, we're a group of artists and uh, hackers. So not, not entirely 50-50, but this is mostly uh, ham radios and uh, hackers uh, talking about the communication design. And um, when we talk about hackers, let's also talk about camp, because um, there were a lot of things we were unsure about, because we're not experienced satellites builders. We are the hackers that the artists came to when they thought how to build a satellite, let's ask our local hacker space. And uh, so at the camp we had first opportunity to actually talk with people with a lot of uh, experience, which was very, very rewarding. So thank you, Mario. <laughs> And um, due to that, we have also um, found a newfound desire in ourselves to redesign a lot of the components that iOS sent us, or the example designs, which of course, uh, most, of, most of it won't be possible at this uh, stage of the development. But we found out the people antenna wasn't that good an idea, but we're still going to go with it. Um, we already have redesigned the power system because um, we have to consider stuff like what if the uh, battery short circuits, what if the battery goes into eclipse, it goes be uh, below zero degrees, um, lithium ion battery below zero degrees um, breaks pretty fast, so you have to heat it. Um, that's all things we had to consider that wasn't in the original schematics or uh, in the kit. And of course the transceiver and the modem we completely replaced that because we wanted a, a CV a, um, a beacon where we could uh, hear the satellite even if it isn't actively transmitting down uh, linking data to us. So something that, that always works that says, oh yeah, satellite, there you are, we hear you. And uh, the 2.4 gigahertz modem which we originally bought, uh, it had a lot of issues with uh, Basically, it wasn't open. It was closed black box, and everybody who wanted to talk to our satellite would have to buy that black box. That was a big no, so complete redesign. Now we use ham radio frequencies. Yeah, also team building, listening to satellites became a big event. You probably already saw us with the antennas out there, and uh, it was a great way to get a feeling for how uh, communication with satellites works. So, and this will also be a future event on our Graz-based uh, radio uh, station, Radio Helsinki, it's free open radio. So we will have lots of talks uh, about Mursat in the future, starting from two weeks from now. And um, also uh, listen a bit to satellites on the radio. Yeah, listening in style, there we are. Maybe you saw us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's also a lot of bureaucracy going on. Um, mainly I've, I'm uh, enumerating four things which we have to deal with. First is the frequency allocation. It's not, um, not per se bureaucracy because you can put the satellite up even if you don't ask them. But uh, it would be good to have a frequency that no one else no one else interferes uh, with you, or even better, you don't interfere in the frequency of someone else because they can sue you. So, good uh, idea to coordinate. Then iOS itself, which is our launch provider, the people who are going, who sold us the kit and are going to put our satellite into orbit, they have troubles of their own because apparently in the US, if you want to become a space launch provider, you have to, to con um, jump to continuous hoops of tests and you have to achieve um, several tests all within the same year or at least before 2011 ends and none of them can fail or you have to start from scratch. So they uh, have it pretty tough right now. But I think they're going to manage. Then of course, 
you have to register the satellite somewhere. If your country doesn't provide a satellite register, you have to register with UNO. Um, Austria didn't have the satellite register. Recently, uh, because the Technical University of Graz, incidentally, basically at the same time, or a bit earlier than us, started to build a satellite, the Austrian government has now noticed that um, it wouldn't be too bad that you have uh, to, to be able to register satellites as uh, in the country. This has one big advantage for uh, the country because if there is no law governing satellites and there goes something wrong with the satellite, uh, the country will have to pay. So, of course, they want to um, implement a law that moves all this responsibility to the actual builders. So they are uh, pushing a law to, um, to the, the uh, Senate, not to the oh, Nationalrat oh. right now, <laughs> which says we have to get a 60 million euro uh, uh, um, payout, a 60 million euro um, insurance. Um, there's also some stuff in that, like um, already running projects are exempt, but the definition what is already running is kind of steep. Also, um, exemptions for, yeah, um, the insurance sum can be moderated in special cases, but then you look in the comments of the law and it says, yeah, if we can, you're really sure that you have so much money, you can pay this anyway, yeah, you don't need insurance, sure. Yeah? So, but uh, basically we are a state financed art project, so we are hoping this counts for something and they won't throw away money they already spent for us and uh, we will be counted as an already running project. But just, just some of the stuff we're dealing with. Then of course, launch. This is going to be on launch because iOS uh, launches somewhere in the US or in uh, Tonga and we're going to package the satellite, send it to US, and this will be the launch for us. And then hopefully we will hear that it has somehow arrived in space. Pack it to space, that's how it should be. No? Space Station 1, please deliver to low Earth orbit. Of course, party follows. Yes, a bit of the, about the environment we have to deal with because uh, Space, uh, you have already heard a lot about space, not that friendly environment. I mean, satellites don't need to breathe, but still. Uh, delivery, we are going to be shot up with the iOS Neptune N45, probably. If it's uh, certified until 10, it will carry 32 CubeSats and uh, a bit more in the inside. So it has a total payload of about 50 kilograms and it's currently under development and start conditions will of course be, there will be a lot of uh, disturbance and, and mechanical stress on the satellite during launch, lots of vibrations. So of course we have to design our satellite to withstand that environment. Then LEO, Earth orbit, we're going to deploy it in a low Earth orbit, which is about 310 kilometers. For us, this is the, one of the lowest limits of low Earth orbit. And um, we will have, uh, 90 minutes uh, orbit time, which means about 20.5 degrees of it we'll see the Earth. And that means hopefully we will get to see the satellite about one to three times a day, during which we can communicate with the satellite for maybe up to 10 minutes if we're lucky. Also, mission duration at this height, at 310 kilometers, you still have some atmosphere not much, not enough to breathe on, definitely uh, less vacuum, less air than you could, uh, than you would have in a, vacuum, in, a, in a vacuum that you create on Earth. But still, at the high speed of the satellite, it produces enough drag to drag us down at, at most six weeks. So depending on if our satellite actually makes it up there, uh, depending on whether iOS actually uh, can deliver, our mission time will be between zero and six weeks. Uh, can you show the video from the polar orbit so uh, people can see a bit how polar orbit works? What does that actually mean? It means uh, the satellite will rotate in a basically circular orbit while, while the Earth will rotate around the, uh, below the satellite and um, it will be pretty fast, so 
we have, it moves about 20, 80, 28, 28,000 kilometers per second. And that means from horizon to horizon, we get maybe 10, maximum 12 minutes time during which we ha can communicate with the satellite. Also, uh, it is the frequencies will be Doppler shifted. So not only you have to have an antenna which points to a satellite and you have to move it after a satellite, how you very know it is, or hopefully know, you guess, you hear the beacon, and uh, you also have to shift the frequencies accordingly. So here, this is what you've already probably seen today, um, screenshot from, from uh, G-Predict, and a moving satellite at 28,000 kilometers per second has small footprint from which where it can be, the area from where it can be listened to and that, that area moves pretty fast. So, here you go. <coughs> okay, um, I'm gonna switch over here. Um, the, we have, of course, some environmental stuff we have to guard against. Of course, there is a lot of mechanical stress during the launch. The rocket will produce a lot of shaking and stuff like that. So we have to build the satellite um, very uh, hard to make it uh, withstand that. Um, as already mentioned, there is no air, so there is no uh, uh, convection. So that's the, the main thing. Uh, things keep cool down here, but up there, even a, a small chip which won't be won't heat up here uh, can overheat in in space. So we have to take uh, precautions for that. Um, we have very very broad ranges of temperatures. Um, our satellite will be sometimes in the sun, sometimes in the behind the Earth. Um, so uh, we will lose temperature quite fast when we're behind the Earth and, and, and warm up very fast when we are in sun. Um, of course, we have to prevent of hardware faults and software errors. So try to program a defensive and try to anticipate which could, what can go wrong and how to fix it. Um, we have the transceiver drift. Um, probably because of the temperature changes and other environmental things, uh, the transceivers can, uh, the, the frequency which the transceivers use to, to, to transmit can drift uh, probably too much that um, we will leave our uh, allowed um, uh, space within the, 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 the spectrum. So we have to implement uh, an emergency switch off uh, where we can switch down the, the, all the radio communications uh, in order to not uh, jam any other, any other signals. Uh, and what's also very uh, interesting is the, the gases, which may be trapped in some components in the solar ring, stuff like that. For example, it's, it's no good idea to, to put uh, an electrolyte condensator up there because it will <coughs> lose all its inner parts and will ruin your, your uh, complete satellite. There are also some stuff we ignore. Uh, for example, all the things that has to do with lifetime, because we have a, a, an, a mission time of six weeks, and nothing is, gets old that fast. Not the solar uh, panels, not the battery, nothing. Um, we also ignore, in a way, the radiation. Uh, there was a talk like two days ago about radiation in space and uh, calling the LEO the, the baby pool of radiation in space. That's where uh, we are in, so we don't have to make big precautions because of, of, of radiation. Of course, we will mount some aluminum on the chips or stuff like that to, to protect from it, but we don't have to, to actually do a lot about it. Uh, and we also uh, don't and can't um, um, withstand these extreme temperatures as we might uh, have up there. So minus 40 degrees is a uh, pro big problem because most of the chips, most of the components we can buy uh, don't withstand these temperatures. Uh, and therefore, yeah, if it gets that hot or that cold up there, our satellite might die. Yeah, that's okay. We have to live with that. Okay, so to the last part, to the technical stuff, uh, more technical details. Of course, we have uh, some um, constraints. For example, the weight constraint. Uh, we are allowed to lift up 750 grams there. And it's not like the limit on, on, an, on a plane flight where, OK, bring some more kilos. It's OK. It's, it's really 750 grams. That's it. No, no more. Um, 
yeah, our mechanical structure and all the numbers you can see there. We, we uh, at the moment, we are about like 500 grams, so we have still 250 grams uh, for hair, for example, or stuff that uh, we want to bring up there. Um, here you can see a component diagram. It's a, a rough uh, schematic about the components uh, the satellite will uh, exist of. Um, very important is the so-called IHU, the internal householding unit. It's a chip that controls all the energy levels, uh, measures the, the currents from the solar cells, and always know, uh, knows what's going on in the satellite. It, it um, measures temperatures, temperature of the battery, for example, if the battery is too low and we have to heat it, or stuff like that. Um, we also have um, a DTMF receiver draw, uh, and the TTX is a, a CV encoder. Uh, these are the low-level command and, and control uh, interfaces, uh, but we will talk about it later and more in detail. Um, we have our main processing unit. The main processing unit is uh, the chip who controls all the payload applications we will have, uh, like the JBEC camera, the Piezo, the alien encounter, of course, and it will have some vast majority of, of memory attached to it, like four gigabytes or so. We will never be able to download all this stuff, but uh, we don't want it to delete things because deleting in flash needs a lot of energy. So we want, but to, want to put up there a big, big memory, which we wouldn't be uh, uh, deleting at, at any point. We just add things. And then there is uh, also a broader communication channel which can be used to download images and other information from the satellite. Okay. Um, the power supply, we have like uh, 48 solar cells around, mounted around the satellite. You can see these black things here. Um, they are connected together um, like this. You can see it here. Um, we have one solar cell. Uh, it, the data sheet says we have 28 million pair of, of, of uh, current coming out of the solar cell. If the light is perfect and everything is perfect, um, we, they, connect, they are connected uh, somehow that one of these, uh, one of these uh, PCBs um, will produce like uh, 46 million pair at 6.6 .6 volts and summing that all up when in uh, when we think that probably three of those will be in sun at the one time, that will be something like 1.1 watts we get out of the solar cells. That's not very uh, um, um, true because we think it's more like 500 milliwatts or even less. Because on the, the solar cells are not perfect, the conditions are not perfect, not all of them might be in sun, and there is some rotation in, in, in the satellite and probably in, uh, the rotation is in a way that not all solar cells are in, in the sun. Okay, um, yeah, you can see it there. These are the solar cells. Um, and we have some uh, dynamic energy management uh, on the satellite. Um, that's because the, 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 the main processing unit doesn't know how much energy has, has the satellite has left, and that's the IHU, uh, what the IHU uh, is for. Uh, and the IHU controls all the energy levels, so it, it knows uh, how much energy is left on a satellite, and therefore we, we thought of an easy protocol um, how to, to distribute this energy and, for example, give the MPU some amount of energy to, um, make, to, to do all the tasks. Um, yeah, as you can see, we, we just separated in energy tokens, which can be separated on the several uh, components of the satellite. Yeah, people on ten it's you again. Okay. So still a lot of time left. Well, about the antenna gain, as already mentioned, we have a dipole antenna, which uh, means the the sand the field of sand um, the emission field looks a bit like this, it's donut shape, which also means if you're here, you don't get any you don't yet get to view the satellite. So that's one of the problems, but uh, one of the advantages is uh, if, you're here, if you're here, you get to hear the satellite a bit better. That's uh, basically what, what antenna gain is all about. The problem with that is that's all fine if you know how your satellite is oriented in space. So if you can make your satellite uh, point the dish towards you, 
that's great. You get all that, that uh, concentrated energy, that antenna gain towards you, where you are, and you hear the satellite. In our case, we don't have the weight budget for any kind of, uh, of attitude control. And we also don't have the time, because um, even though the attitude control systems, which take up a lot less space and weight, they take some time to stabilize the satellite. So basically, we do nothing about that. Uh, and we're stuck with the dipole antenna from the sign with iOS, which means um, we could get in the unfavorable position where we are here, and the satellite uh, rotates like this, and we never hear it. So that would be worst case. Um, best case would, of course, be it will always look down. Probably not going to happen. Um, what's probably going to happen is that we will have fading. So sometimes the, the cone of the emission of the dipole antenna uh, rotates in and rotates out. And depending on how, on how fast the satellite will rotate, we'll have more or less uh, fading signal where it gets stronger or uh, weaker with time. Actually, from that signal level, we can then calculate on Earth how fast it rotates. But uh, by this time, we won't be able to do anything about it. So normally, the way to deal with that is to have a protocol which uh, carries enough redundant information to deal with, uh, with fading. But in our case, we have a very, very fine trade-off between the energy we have the bandwidth we want to use because, uh, as you have heard before, we want to transmit down pictures, and those take up a lot of space, and we only have 10 minutes communication window time. And on the other hand, uh, because of fading, we need forward error correction, which uh, is the kind of redundancy I've mentioned about. So basically, you say words uh, hello, and then hello, and later so you go hey, and you have uh, information in multiple times, and you can calculate and recover the, the original sent information, even if you lose part of it. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that. And we have basically two communication channels planned. One is at two meters. Those are the amateur radio frequencies we mentioned before, the classics, actually, two meter and 70 centimeters. And one of those will be used for our TRX control uplink, which is also what we mentioned before, the emergency shutoff commando, which use DTMF commands. And uh, the other one is basically where we transmit data. We uh, have our beacon, which uh, will be at the bottom of our uh, 70 centimeters allocated frequencies uh, band. And above that, we will have a broadband on-demand uh, data downlink where we'll uh, put down additional, uh, additional telemetry, uh, the pictures, the noise data, and random messages, which we put up on the satellite before of that. So we also plan to, to uh, do a bit of storing for what, not really, but basically to randomly, if we have the energy, to randomly uh, uh, transmit messages to Earth. Of course, the protocols will be free, so everybody can listen to it. Not everybody will be able to talk to it. So, DTMF emergency commands. Yes. How are we going to save energy with that? Because we can't continue to listen, but we still have to. So, we are going, we're doing the following. We're going to listen every five seconds for 200 milliseconds, and if there is a continuous DTMF tone, it will continue to listen, and then we can send uh, our shut-off commands or whatever DTMF emergency commands we set we uh, decide to implement. All right, oh yes, of course. This is connected, the, the uh, DTMF control is connected directly to the IHU. It generates uh, one uh, specially dedicated reset line, which shuts off and resets everything. So this is a hardware reset. Then the beacon, this is the, oh, satellite, I hear you, will be in Morse code, CV, continuous wave. It will be sent for about every, about every 60 seconds. It will uh, last for at least 30 and will contain basic uh, transmission, uh, telemetry data, and of course our call sign because we are on amateur radio frequencies. 
Also, it will acknowledge our DTMF commands in case there were any. So we have the start character. So this is the start of the beacon, the call sign, the beacon counter for Jupyter Larsen, which we implemented. Uh, basic uh, bit fields, which um, tells us a bit of the state of the satellite, the number of commands, and if we still have some space tokens, voltages, and uh, parity. Then, the interesting thing, how it transmits all the data. So what we planned uh, was, well, you send uh, a short command upwards, and then you get lots of data down. And this is basically what we're doing, but uh, like I mentioned before, we have fading, so we want fault error correction. We want a standardized, uh, standardized protocol that everybody can use and listen to. And we want high throughput because of the pictures. And to be quite frank, we haven't found the, the solution yet. So we have considered um, BPS Car 1000, which is used on uh, Aris sats uh, right now. Probably we're going to hear later of that in Mario's talk. Looking forward to it, so should you. And uh, we have also considered uh, QPSK 500 with uh, additional forward error correction. We have also considered before that um, IFSK with IX25, which is the D standard amateur radio um, packet communication protocol. But I won't really, no, I will go in it has tons of problems. <laughs> it uh, has lots of overhead. IFS car is uh, really slow, uses up a lot of bandwidth, and it's not very efficient. And there are lots of uh, fields and in, in, IX, in the AX25 header, which aren't used anymore. And uh, the basic specification requires you to acknowledge every packet, which, of course, we can't do. We have a uh, satellite uplink, and it takes time to send stuff up and down. What you want to do is you send up send me down and then you just listen and the satellite uh, should just transmit and you have to listen, you do, have, you do not want to acknowledge every packet. What you do is on the next pass you say, okay, I didn't receive those three packets, send them again, but that's it. So we're still looking for it here in this case. Maybe, most probably, if we can manage, we, will, we might uh, look into modifying um, BPSK 1000 for higher bandwidth. So that's one option right now. So how to avoid bi-rectual uh, communication? We already mentioned it, because what's the problem with bi-directional communication? You lose a lot of time and bandwidth if you have to wait for the acknowledgement, because you can't be sure the satellite actually received the acknowledgement, because you have uh, a channel which is lossy, and uh, OK. So you acknowledge a packet, and then you don't get anything for one minute. OK, maybe it didn't receive the acknowledge. Send it again. You can't do that. That's just a no. no? So, so we just tell a satellite to send us whatever data we want, we, and then we just listen. What we do, we have different uh, parts in the, in, the, uh, in the memory. We want to download, and so we have several commands, and we just send, send this, after that send this, after send to this, and uh, then execute the queue. Of course, there's uh, tiny, tiny bits of authentication in there, so to make sure the correct sequence of commands is, uh, is uh, executed. So now there we have, the, the plan is that um, we have some regions where we have uh, uh, ground stations, people who have already agreed to help us, and they will send the commandos up when the satellite passes by, and then the idea is that multiple persons in that region will be able, that means you people, will be able to listen to our satellite and send, and hopefully send uh, back the data it received. And between several per persons who have received the same transmissions, we hope to get uh, error-free whole. Now, there are some regions where we do not have someone who can talk to the satellite and start it and tell it to start transmitting. And in that case, we have the uh, wait until command, where someone says, OK, satellite, uh, start transmitting this area of memory, this area of memory, and this area of memory. Then wait this many seconds, because we know the orbit by then, and can say, OK, it will be in an area where, again, people can listen to it, and then start uh, 
from the beginning and increment to the next area of memory and transmit that. So and this is how we hope to get our pictures and our uh, sound data down. Now the hardware, we, where are we going to implement all that? So this is not the, en uh, the energy unit. This is just the main CPU. We will do TXRX uh, channel transmission. It will, it is an ARM Cortex M3. It's the same stuff you have on your badges right now, which will be, is planned to be our main CPU right now. Um, it will also do forward error correction and it will do image, uh, a tiny bit of image analysis and uh, it will trigger the camera, download the GPEGs from the camera and talk to the flash and store stuff in flash. Also it will uh, do the alien counter. And of course the microphone, how could I forget? It will sample data continuously whenever it has been started by the internal householding unit, sample a bit of data, store it, and save it for downlink later. So now, of course, we can't send every picture down. That's just too much data. We have four gigs of flash, and uh, in the time, we will be lucky if we can get 10 pictures down or so. Maybe even that is optimistic. So we have to uh, do some kind of in-place decisions on which pictures are worth downloading. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the GPEG format, uh, which stores its uh, discrete cosinus transformation coefficients. This is the, the way JPEG compresses pictures. And by just looking at the highest order uh, coefficients, you, can, you get a kind of uh, mini preview image and from that we will generate a, a histogram or a compressed histogram because we won't uh, transmit back every colors for every picture, but we will transmit back information about the file size, which is a um, very uh, a rough estimate about the information the picture contains. And so if it's only black sky, the picture, the JPEG picture will be pretty um, small, so it won't be worth downloading. On the other hand, uh, there could be lots of noise in it, so it could be pretty large. In this case, we will look at the histogram. If the histogram is pretty even, very uh, normal distributed, we'll uh, say, okay, probably lots of noise, also not worth downloading. Now, maybe there's lots of blue in it and a bit of black. Oh, that might look like the Earth. Yeah, hell, we want that. Okay, um, even better. If we would have, uh, um, so we will get uh, a camera which also does, uh, already does cheaper compression. Um, it might have, the best thing for us would be to get a camera which also does progressive JPEG compression because then the coefficients will be uh, right at the start of the picture. We won't even have to read the whole file. Um, what we're probably going to get is a camera which uh, doesn't even compress a JPEG correctly because it uh, doesn't, doesn't do Y uh, CBCR uh, compression, but does it for every RGB channel separately. But that's okay too. We'll just modify our, what kind of histogram we send down. So, to testing. Hmm. Of course, we will test the uh, Satellite, we have actually a complete second team which uh, isn't telling us anything about how they are developing our tests. And uh, they are right now looking into ways how to show us up. And uh, probably going to do Wacom test chamber to see if our satellite uh, is going to withstand uh, space. Vibrating table, are we going to withstand the launch? Radiation will be ignored. And of course, we'll do a big uh, balloon launch with the satellite to test our communications equipment. Hmm. All right. And this is our tent. This is where we are hacking on the satellite right now, or at least uh, on the on the uh, hardware, uh, not hardware part. And yeah, show by and ask us questions maybe buy a t-shirt, which we sell those here. And we are placed in, we are located in Leventville, right over there, uh, in the handle corner next to the big antenna, below the big shortwave antenna right here. So come over, talk to us, or drink with us. 
<laughs> OK, uh, questions, please. <laughs> yes, please. Can you take three antennas to be sure that one is always pointing to, towards Earth? Mm, excuse me? You said you have one antenna? Yes. And it might be it's, that it's the a deep hole antenna, position, yes. yes. That it don't send something to Earth. Can you take um, three antennas? Um, we could do a, a different antenna design. It's a very good question, actually. But the antenna design is the way it is because uh, this way uh, we won't have any problem with the ejection cylinder. So I'm going to uh, do a demonstration with our um, model here. Our antenna is basically a, a measuring tape. So you also know measuring tape. If you uh, do it around the deck and you put it out of the measuring uh, roll, it's um, the pass. It straightens by itself. And this is exactly what we want to do. When our satellite is ejected by spring mechanism for, by iOS in space, <laughs> the antennas, the measuring tape, will um, straighten up automatically. So of course, we could uh, put another measuring tape down there, but it would interfere with our antenna up there. And then, who knows, it, it might uh, get stuck in the ejection cylinder. So we don't really dare modify the design from iOS because we know this will actually uh, be able, this will, this they will actually be able to deploy. And uh, we don't want it to get stuck in their prototype rocket. Um, yeah, but can we tell if the satellite is oriented to, to Earth? Well, we also plan, if we have the space, to include a magnetic orientation sensor. Uh, this might tell us if our satellite is oriented to Earth, and we might be able to decide uh, not to send at all in that case. But then again, that's not a good idea, because then, during the due to a soft default, we might not get any transmissions at all. So uh, we won't do that. Um, but we have another kind of sensor, which I didn't mention. We also have photodiodes which uh, will tell us uh, which direction the sun is so that we don't take pictures in that direction uh, since we, yeah, taking a picture in the direction would basically result in a glared picture, uh, just white, and that's not useful. Okay, thank you. Next question. Hello? Yeah. Okay, um, we have a question from the IRP channel. Uh, there's a guy who, uh, who would like to ask you the following question. Would it be possible that you offer space to an SD card instead of sending half to the orbit? And if yes, is there any way to get FTP access to it via the built-in bump? Uh, I don't think I, I really uh, stood the, the I hear, uh, couldn't really hear the question, but what, what if FedEx fails? No, no, please, please, please again. Okay, I read it again. <laughs> Would it be possible that if you offer space on an SD card instead of sending to the orbit. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, well, the flash, it's not, not different from an SD card. Uh, did, did you ask if we can get the SD card back to Earth? No, no, no. no I think, I, think, Earth, I, think I got it. Um, huh? Yeah, of course, it, it would be possible if it's not that much. Of course, we, we, we are carrying four gigabytes of, of, of storage up there, and, and it would be mostly empty when we launch it, and it, we won't be able to fill it up with all the data we are gathering in space. So it will be possible to send up data as well to, to, the, to space, uh, in, except of here, of course, if you just uh, prefer data. But an FTP access would be quite difficult, I think, because yeah. we, yeah, that's, that's limiting the, the, the amount of, of memory we can download uh, from, from the stuff we want to gather. So uh, we, 
we think that it's possible to download something like 10 to maybe 15 megabytes of data during the whole mission. So an FTB access is not really, really a good idea because we would uh, um, um, use the, all of our bandwidth for that and, and nothing the, for, for the, the only uh, kind of uplink, uh, who is, uh, uplink data which is currently planned is uh, adding additional messages to the random uh, message uh, trans uh, uh, transmission and to modify some code maybe. But not much data. Thanks. More questions? Hit us. Or not, not in the physical sense. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, you are trying to solve really many problems that almost every other satellite builder is trying to solve. Yes. And you have some <coughs> nice experiments actually that you add. Why don't you go to some other people that already are launching a satellite and say them, take our 8,000 euros and mm -hmm. put a microphone and a headphone in it so you can, you have your experiment and they maybe already have solved some of the problems like orientation control. <laughs> yeah, but what, what's the fun uh, yeah. to have someone else build a satellite for you? So, uh, yeah, you are not <laughs> launching it yourself either. So what's, uh, I mean, you, yeah, you are not going to build a rocket yourself. Yeah. No, that's so true. So you are but still putting but, up. But the, at the end of it, we will know how to build a satellite. And then we have, will have ignited, uh, acquired the necessary no, uh, knowledge to maybe do other things with it. So who knows? Okay. I'm just asking because I think there are already way too much satellites up there that mm -hmm. do CV on a ham radio band and mm -hmm. tell what temperature they have and try to get their batteries charged. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Well, if anybody has uh, uh, good um, ideas we want to put forward, uh, please come talk with us. We are looking for the new input, definitely. So I'm looking forward to that. Hmm. So. Ah, schön. So are there any other questions now? Control commands you can send up to your satellite are not encrypted. Mm -hmm. um, would it, in theory, be possible to hijack the satellite? Ah. Or, to, or to reset it just to annoy you? Uh, of course, it would be possible. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> yes and no. Uh, we have, um, well, to be frank, we don't have a lot of safe, safeguards against that because we are. Uh, uh, we use amateur radio frequencies, and that kind of prohibits any kind of encryption. Uh, what we can do and are doing is basically three things. So the upwards transmission will be very, very, uh, very narrow band. Um, no, not, not narrow band, but narrow direction. So it will probably hard to listen to it. So we can, um, well, not hide secrets in it, but uh, yeah, if, if it's uh, some, some tiny part, like the DTMF emergency commands is not documented, uh, you can still do brute force, but please don't. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, the, the uh, chance that you will be successful in the 10 minutes it passes by is pretty low. And even then, we will be able to reset the satellite later. Uh, the other thing is, um, could you hijack the RX uh, TX uplink and uh, do something with, with the protocol, uh, with the command queue? Um, well, the only protection we have of that is the message um, uh, modification detection code, which will, uh, which will be sent at the end of the command queue. So if you look closely, ah, I'm, I'm too far, I've gone too far. Oh my god, mad scientist, I've gone too far. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There it is. Please step, step a bit to the side. So we are going to send clear command queue, then append command x, x, uh, y XLM, uh, maybe append command wait duration. There will be several commands, like send us the uh, data of, of the image quality, 
they send us an image number such and such, uh, dump the, the telemetry data, dump the counters, and at the end there will be execute command queue, number of commands I just sent you, MD5 uh, sum over the previous